All right, there's our soon to be handle. We are super close now. What about there? I've been using this thing pretty much all day. I let my handle burn a little bit. Whoops. It's got a lot of chopping power because of that little bit longer handle. There's a nice dogwood right here and, and it's super hard wood, about the hardest thing around. And if I'm gonna harvest some green wood here, which is gonna be a little bit easier to work with because dead dried dogwood is is hard <laughs> it's really hard to carve and work with so the greener stuff's gonna be a bit easier i'm gonna i'm gonna harvest one half of this tree trunk right here i like working with different tools and and um experiencing how they how they work and and how to um how to hold them just right and how to with the angle in which you, you use them matters and how to scrape with them and stuff i really like simple tools like this these are heirloom type tools. This is a tomahawk head made by Jason Smith at Hobo Forge Survival. And, and with just this tool right here, with this beautiful sheath, I can hack down this piece of dogwood and I can craft myself a new handle for it. It comes with an awesome hickory handle, but my way, <laughs> I like to make my own stuff if I can. And uh, this is one thing that I can put my own touch on and I can make it mine. You know, this there'll be, I mean, there is, it's handmade, forged steel and handmade sheath there's not another one like it but now there's really not going to be one like it because i'm going to have a nice handcrafted on three handle i'm going to use this tool only to make this handle i could use a saw i could use a, another axe or tomahawk or something like that, but I think it'll be really fun to uh, just use this tomahawk to make the handle. And by harvesting a one side of the, the trunk like this, you just got another one here, you're not gonna kill the entire tree. A lot of people worry about that kind of stuff, you know. There's no shortage of trees where I live, but uh, you know, in an effort to be a little bit more, you know, conservative, I will harvest just one half of this here and this tree will continue to live on and it'll actually probably increase its likelihood of survival. It will, this trunk here will, will grow much, much faster. So by holding it in my fist like that, it makes a really nice little hand ax that you could do quite a bit of crafting with. You know, you could, you could butcher an animal with this. You could take a deer. If you took the handle off and used it just like a, like an ulu type slicer type knife, you could take a deer from start to finish from from the woods to the freezer with a tool like this. I know because I've done it, not with this particular tomahawk, but with a tool kind of like it. Like I said, dogwood here is a hard wood. It is, it is tough and uh, about the hardest wood around, so it should make a really, really nice handle. I could choose easier woods to work with, like a maple or something. Maple would be easier, uh, as easier one of the hard woods to work with, but um, it won't hold up to the abuse like dogwood will. Look at all the water coming out of there. It's early spring, and all the trees are just now starting to pump the water and the nutrients up out of the soil to start producing their leaves. pretty straight ow there we go all 
All right, there's our soon to be handle right there. Got a lot of work to do, of course, but it's fairly straight. Got a little curve in it, but I could probably take a lot of that out. I accidentally split this end here. This is gonna be the end of the handle though. So I only split it like an inch on accident when I was cutting it. But uh, this is gonna be where the tomahawk head goes. And I think we're gonna be in business. Let's go find a nice place where we can uh, we can work on this thing. If I head down towards the river, make a make a cup of joe or something. How's that sound? It's cold today. It's probably I think the high is supposed to be 48, 50, something like that. It's pretty chilly, pretty cold spring day. I mean, it's not cold, but you know, for spring, it's a little bit nippy today. It's been in the 70s, maybe 75 yesterday, something like that. But, chilled right down generally speaking i try not to use a map or compass when i come to places like this i, I try to navigate my way around just by you know using using my sense of direction using the sun on days like today when it's super cloudy you know see that a little bit of blue sky popping out over there to my left but uh well let's just move that that's gonna be uh sun so the brightest part of the sky is right here so I'm guessing the sun is in, in that direction. A little bit hard to tell, but the brightest part of the sky is over here. Sun's probably over there. It's about the middle of the day. That's south, give or take. So that direction behind the camera is north. That's east, and that is west. So the sunny spot, the, the blue sky is, is west. If I want to get back to my truck where I park my truck, I'm going to go pretty much south, maybe maybe southwest-ish, and that will get me back to the part, the uh, road where I park my truck. And I, generally speaking, try to rely just on that kind of method of, of navigation, and it has served me quite well. While, I, you know, I've gotten turned around a little bit and delayed, I, I don't get lost doing that. As long as you kind of know where the sun is, it's, it's, uh, it's difficult to get completely lost. Yeah, yeah, it can, it can happen, depending on where you are, I suppose, but, um, in my area, there's roads and stuff. If you walk in any direction, pretty much, for long enough, you're going to run into a road. A river or a road. Nice. Some nice, fresh water right here. I'm going to just get a little bit. Make a cup of joe here shortly. I like this little spot right here, tucked into the, tucked into the mountain laurel, right next to the fast flowing river. Start a little fire here and we'll get to work.
coming along nicely. We've got plenty of space at the front and the back. We just gotta keep thinning out the sides so it can slide all the way up to the top of our handle and then fit really nicely and snug and tight so it won't work loose on us. It, well, it's supposed to come loose when you want it to, but I want it to be good and snug when I don't want it to come loose. So I'm getting it pretty straight, actually. I'm taking out the taking out the bellies, like the, the parts that swell out. Like this was, this part right there had kind of a, a pretty good bend to it. And I've just been shaving off that side to kind of straighten it out a little bit more. And it seems to be coming along pretty good. It's looking pretty straight. It's not going to be perfect, but I don't really want it to be perfect. I like... I kind of like the little imperfections and stuff and handmade things like this. And that's exactly why I like the handmade hand forged tomahawk right here is because it has, it has all the imperfections of the handmade process left in it. It's not perfect in any way. It's like, it's just, it's got its flaws and small little, it, it, all the, the tool marks, the hammer marks are left in it. And I just, I just really like that kind of stuff. I'm getting real close to the finished product now so I'm taking my time and I'm going real slow and careful not to take off too much or splinter it or anything like that but I've got the handle pretty straight now and it's fitting nice and snug can you see that not a lot of space around that eye which is kind of what I'm looking for so I just got to keep shaving little bits where it's tight like it's a little bit tight right there and a little bit tight right there. So I'm going to shave that down and that'll snug it up all the way around and I'll just keep working it all the way up near the top. I might not go all the way to the top, but I'm going to, you know, get, get further up. I want the handle to be a little bit longer than it is right there. So I'm going to keep working it up. All right, we are super close now. It is fitting very nicely. I've got the the bit, the blade portion of the uh, tomahawk kind of centered and facing the direction I want. Now is when a saw would be really handy. I could kind of cut off the top where I wanted it, but uh, I'm gonna try not to cheat here and keep using the tomahawk only to build this thing up. Now, the only part that I need to fit tight is is right here where the head goes. The rest of it I can kind of slim down a little bit more if I wanted. That way it's uh, just a little bit lighter, a little bit easier on the hands perhaps, easier to grip. Although it feels pretty good the size that it is. So we'll see, see how much I need to take off the rest of it. But I'm gonna get that thing fitting just right before we do that. I'm gonna pound it on there a little bit, find something to do that with. Get it to seat a little bit. Yeah, that's looking, that's looking really good. It's shaving the wood right here on this corner just a little bit. Right there, you can see that? I'd kind of like it to be doing that all the way around. So I need just a little bit of fine tuning and then we can finish her off. Now I know what you're thinking. You're saying that's green wood, you know, you can't, can't make a tomahawk handle or an ax handle out of green wood. And, yeah, it's going to shrink up and it's not going to fit exactly the same as it does right now. I get that. But a tomahawk, I feel like it's going to be a lot more forgiving than an axe. I, mean, I, I don't think I would try to make an axe handle out of green wood simply because it's going to shrink up. 
Uh, but a tomahawk, as long as the, the handle tapers and gets wider towards the top, I feel like if it shrinks up, it's really not gonna make that big a difference. But, you know, time will tell, obviously. I could be very wrong. But carving, I know, like dogwood, for example, when it's dry and dead, it is it's hard. I mean, it is super hard to carve. And it's hard to carve when it's green as well, but it uh, it's much, much easier when it's green. I'm really close. I mean, I got it. I'm getting it fine-tuned. I shave just a tiny little bit off. I put the head back on, see if it fits, shave a little bit, put it back. And I just keep doing that over and over again until I get it fitting just the way I want. And it is really close, man, really close. All right, that's pretty, re it's really good. It's a really good fit now. Uh, it's not perfect, but it's pretty dang close. I'm gonna go ahead and trim this top off right here. And I can do some fine tuning here just by scraping it and getting it even more more gooder. <laughs> so I'm gonna cut that off right there and mark where I want it. About there. I was able to get it pretty straight. You can see where when I originally cut the piece of wood off of the, uh, the tree, you can see where it split a little bit right there. And I could always shorten the handle a little. I could cut it off right there and get rid of that split if it should happen to get any worse. But I kind of like the length of this. Kind of like how long it is. It's gonna give you, a, I mean, the longer the handle, the more Speed you're going to be able to get on the on the head of the axe on the blade and the more speed the more power the more force you're going to have in, in cutting so so for that reason i think that's pretty cool let's give it a try i'm tempted to throw it but gosh how disappointing would it be to spend spend all that time <laughs> carving a handle and then break it immediately uh, i don't know if i'm i don't know if i'm willing to uh take that risk <laughs> might break my heart great it's not loose it didn't work loose at all it actually i feel like it got tighter <laughs> so that is excellent When I do this, you can see the moisture getting pushed out the ends of the wood. So this is gonna speed up that drying process a little bit. If I do it slowly, I don't think I'll get any issues with it splitting or cracking or anything. Dogwood's not too bad about splitting anyway, from my experience at least. Some woods split more than others. See that moisture coming out the end of the wood? I don't think this thing is any less sharp than when I started today. 
the way I see, the way I test, a couple ways I test to see if a blade is still sharp is one, see if it shaves. The other is just put it on my thumbnail and scrape it like that. And if it feels kind of tacky, like it won't easily slide across my nail like that, it leaves tiny little shavings of my thumbnail on there, then that means it's still pretty good and sharp. And like I said, I've been using this thing pretty much all day for, uh, it took me, ooh, I'm burning my handle. Talking to the camera and burning my handle. Pay attention, Jason. Um, the, uh, like I said, I was using this thing all day and it, I don't, it doesn't really even need any sharpening. He's done a very good job of the heat treat on this thing. And it's, uh, it's a solid tool. This is an heirloom type tool that you could pass down to your grandkids. Put my, talking to the camera, talking to you guys, and I let my handle burn a little bit, but that's okay. It won't hurt it. <laughs> as long as it don't burn that part, right? As long as it don't burn the end where the head goes, I think we'll be okay. I'll just scrape off that burnt part. Adds character. Whoops. That might be kind of cool, actually. Ah, smoking my eyeballs. But there is a pretty cool nearly finished handle needs a little bit of tlc cleaning up but just some use and it will uh smooth that handle out a little bit as well <laughs> set it on fire <laughs> whoops very rustic kind of matches the head now looks old but works fantastic this long handle is really great man you can that thing's got a lot of chop this really really lightweight head has got a lot of chopping power because of that little bit longer handle so i kind of like that i think that worked out pretty perfect anyway thanks for watching guys really do appreciate it i'm gonna get out of here hit that thumbs up subscribe if you haven't done so already and i cannot wait to see you on the next one